aviondemand.com. Automotive training you can receive anywhere, anytime. Your online training starts here. Okay, so getting back to our presentation, how can a younger tech, or possibly somebody that doesn't have a whole lot of experience, avoid some of these pitfalls? Well, the number one solution would be education. The more education and experience you have trying to diagnose different avenues on the vehicle, the easier it becomes for you. Also, performing your proper research. So even myself, I've been doing this for well over 30 years. There's certain brands of cars that I know deep down I don't have the experience I may need to diagnose whatever the problem happens to be that I'm, that I'm confronted with. So I'll take a little bit of time, I'll go to my information system, whatever the case happens to be, and I'll do a little bit of research and some of the stuff I might be trying to, to zero in on for my personal needs maybe would be a wiring diagram, which is an electrical schematic of of what's going on in the vehicle, how it's designed to work, what other systems are tied into it, um, possibly some code setting strategies, stuff along those lines. I want to always try to think like the PCM, and like I said, the code setting strategies a lot of times offer us insight to kind of shortcut our diagnostic procedure. One of the things that we talk about thinking like the PCM, all the PCMs have different modes of operation. So to get everybody on the same page, everybody's heard of open loop, closed loop, um, clear flood mode. There's a whole arrangement of different modes of operation. And open loop and closed loop and clear flood mode, those are pretty much uniform and pretty much are designed to work the same no matter what the nameplate is on the fender of the vehicle you happen to be working on. So here's a prime example of what we're referring to. Here's an open loop. So open loop obviously is designed so that when you first start the vehicle and it's got a relatively cold engine, it needs to try to get into closed loop, which basically means the computer is in control of the fuel delivery as quick as possible. So in the early days, we relied on the exhaust gas temperatures to heat up the oxygen sensor. Nowadays, as, you, as everyone's well aware of, we have heated oxygen sensors. So we can obtain closed loop status relatively quickly. But notice the components that are displayed on the screen that the computer's actually looking at while it's in the open loop status here. So we've got temperature sensors. We have the fuel injection system, obviously. Your load sensor, whether it be a MAP sensor or mass airflow, um, your throttle position sensor and your RPM sensor. So let's put this in a perspective. Let's say there was a drivability problem when the vehicles first started. You can name the problem. It could be that it stalls out. It could be that you know, it, it actually hesitates or whatever the complaint happens to be. And let's say that we didn't have a whole lot of experience and I plugged my scan tool in because the check engine light's on and I had a trouble code for a faulty oxygen sensor. So this is where the automotive common sense comes into play. Is the oxygen sensor even being, being looked at by the computer under those operating conditions? So that oxygen sensor, granted, may be bad, and you could replace it and it could cure that code, but if the drivability concern was something that was happening while it was still in the open loop status, well, that oxygen sensor is not going to cure that drivability complaint. And that's one of the key features that a lot of the younger or inexperienced technicians don't really understand, and it really, it really shines a light on to just pulling codes out and attacking those codes may not always be your best avenue to cure the diagnostic or drivability problem at hand. And that's one thing that the consumers have always complained about. You know, I've taken my car to this shop three times, four times, whatever. They charged me some money, they gave it back to me, and I still have the exact same problem. So we want to avoid conditions like that, and a lot of it is on our shoulders of understanding what's going on in the computer system under different modes of operation. So keep that in mind, again, for the lesser experienced or the newer type of technician.